In today's video, we're going from this to this as we go through the first build stage of our G-Speed Element Enduro Budget Belly Dragger build. Wow, that's a mouthful. Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome back to the Budget Belly Dragger build based on the uh, G-Speed chassis and the Enduro Element Builders Kit. Sorry, the Element Enduro Builders Kit. Um, <clears throat> parts have arrived in the last week or so. Uh, the chassis arrived much earlier, as, as you might have seen in the previous video. Uh, but all the, all the other bits are here now. Uh, so we're going to start building this thing up. Now, I'm not going to go through uh, building links and shocks and axles and gearboxes. That's all covered in the builder's kit instruction manual. Um, <clears throat> it's a really good manual, actually. Uh, I really like it. It kind of reminds me of the old Haynes manual, which I think is the intention. And I'm old enough to remember the Haynes manuals. Um, but, you know, they're really clear instructions in here. So I don't think there's anything we need to cover uh, that's not covered really well in here already. I haven't found anything wrong with the instructions so far uh, in just assembling these parts. So I'm going to keep it handy because uh, it's going to be useful when we come to mounted links and suspension just to make sure that we're mounting things in the right place on the on the chassis but otherwise uh, well, I think we're ready to start building. So we're going to start at the front work my way back um, and then we'll we'll get everything mounted up and hopefully by the time we're done this video we should have a basically a, a dragging or rolling chassis uh, ready for the electrics and then we'll cover the uh, electrics placement with the exception of the servo that's in there already because uh, I need to mount the links to it we'll cover the electrics uh, in the next video so what I'll probably do is um, time lapse through some of these bits but I'll, I'll, I'll try and slow down and, and show the detail when it's relevant so let's have a quick look first of all uh, front chassis at uh, front axle we've got links steering links and panhard link mounted to that already i'm a little bit concerned that the steering link is not going to have enough travel uh, but we'll see uh, once it's on there and if we need to adjust it we'll adjust it but i have done it as per the instructions at this point i think the only option really will probably be to mount the link on the top uh, of the steering arm but we'll see uh, other than that it's looking good ready to go we've got our front links here uh, front suspension, front drive shaft, and then on this side, obviously, rear axle, really nice and simple, straight axle, nothing complicated about that at all. Um, links, suspension. And then in the middle, we've got our gearbox. Uh, I've assembled this already, obviously, um, with the maximum amount of overdrive that comes in the box. It's pretty straightforward. This was probably the bit that gave me the most grief, just because making sure you get the right gears in the right place. Uh, but it was still pretty easy, really. So. I think we're all good to go. Uh, I've kept the cover on for now. I know a lot of people take that off because it is just extra weight that you don't really need. Uh, but I <clears throat> drive in some fairly dirty, dusty conditions sometimes. So I'm going to keep that on just to try and keep things a bit clean. Right, let's make a start. I've got all the screws that came with left over with the element kit. So these are all the link and suspension screws that I haven't used so far. Um, so I'm hoping that I can just reuse those if not, I've got uh, a load of these stainless headed ones, these stainless ones, um, but they're a bit bulky, so I'm hoping I can get away without using those. So we have uh, two slightly, in terms of the links, we have two slightly longer links and one shorter. So the shorter is the top link, and the longer, the two longer ones are the bottom links. So what I'm going to do first is take these out of the way. And I'm actually just going to loosen or remove one side of the um, the skid so that I can get into these uh, little um, set screws because that's where my links mount on the front. And then we've got, as you can see here, hopefully, uh, this is where one of our top links goes. And there's only one on this side because there's a pan hard. So it's three link suspension with a pan hard on the front, four link suspension on the back. There we go, the plan worked. Now the, the set screws are 1.5 mil in there, so swap that out. Ah, I remember now, this doesn't fit, I have to do these by hand. 
We'll take our two longer mounts. We want this one facing this way. I've seen one or two uh, comments that you occasionally have to shave a bit off the, the Delrin here just to get this in. Um, I'm hoping that if we get it lined up super straight, we might be okay. Yeah, there we go. So it is a bit tough, but it goes in. And it's just a matter of uh, making sure it lines up with a hole. It doesn't yet. There we go, I think we're through there now. Which is there. So that is now nice and sturdy, nice and solid in there. Do the other side. Yep. Okay, once they're in, we'll pop that door and back in place. Like so. Put the slider over and back in. Okay, so that's our top links in, uh, bottom links in place. And we're gonna put the top link in place. Need to turn that over for this. So I'll make sure I get it in the right orientation. So that's my axle orientation. Panhard's gonna go there. So that's gonna come into this mount here. What sort of length of screw are we going to need for that? Actually, I'm going to bust out the bust out the stainless set. Got these again off Amazon, uh, or might have been eBay. Not sure. I'll put a link in the description anyway. Now, with this G-Speed chassis, there is only one mounting position for the front link, which having looked online and uh, looked in the, the G Speed Facebook group, which if you're not a men member of and you're building one of these, get on there, because there's some really helpful people on there. Um, they've settled on a, a single top mount position on the front, and that's deemed to be the best. There used to be multiple mount positions, but they've just determined that this one was the most effective, so they've left it with one. Okay, that might actually be too long. I know, that'll be just right. So these are handed, whereas the front links are not so much, because you can just swap them over. So at this point, we should be able to mount our links. There's something else that's useful to have for these things is a, a digital caliper. Um, if nothing else, just for checking that you've got the right length screw. So there's lots that come in it and they're not labeled. So we need a 14 mil for this, this job. And that's our 14 mil. <clears throat> now the instruction seems to suggest so this just goes straight into the plastic and there's not a bolt on the other side so hopefully we'll find that to be the case certainly doesn't look to be threaded so as i mentioned previously you do have to just be a little bit careful when we're screwing this into plastic just to make sure we don't chew through it i'm going to Put both of those, both sides of those in. Just get them started. 
would be less awkward then. Okay, so we make sure we get our axle oriented. Obviously I'm working upside down at the minute, which is a little bit awkward, but makes sense to do it this way. And we've got our two. Oh, now that's not right, is it? <laughs> I've mounted one of the shocked links one way and one the other. I'm sure that won't take a second to change. So let's try that again. So, first link through there. And then in the case of the top link, it does go, does have a bolt on the top. So I'm going to put that through from that side. Okay, so that's our axle mounted. I need to try and mount the pan hard and the steering. The steering link says an 18mm screw and a nut, but I'm not using the, the stock plastic servo arm that comes with it. I'm using a metal one. And I think 18 mil might be too long. So I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. Yeah, that looks better. That is Twelve mil. So we are screwing into a metal servo arm here. So I'm just going to put a bit of Loctite, blue Loctite on there. Not loads, just enough to keep it. Love these Loctite sticks. Again, got that off Amazon. Link in the description. Okay, so we've got a decent bit of trouble there. And the next thing is the pan hard. Now the pan hard has to clear the servo arm. At the moment, it isn't. So, the first part I've bought that's off kit, as it were, are these RC four wheel drive uh, spacers. I'm sure you can probably get cheaper ones somewhere. These are about eight pounds for 10, which seems okay, but they are uh, metal rather than plastic. So we'll try with one and see how we get on. And we may need another one. So let's go for uh, it's going to be a 16 mil. I'm just going to check this out first and make sure it fits before I. Uh, Before I lock tight it in. Yeah, we have not got the clearance we need there. That's going to foul on the servo horn. So we may, we may need another one. And this is where it's definitely handy to have this sort of selection of different sized uh, screws handy. And that, that now gives us the clearance we need. So, uh, I'm sure how well that will come across, whether the camera will focus. We've got plenty of clearance there now. And the servo is not going to foul on that. Okay. Let's mount some shocks. So, to mount the bottom part of the shock, we want 14 mil which I've got plenty of, because there was lots of in the kit. 
and then that just goes straight through the pivot ball he says and straight into the plastic uh, shock mount on the top of the axle okay and this is what I actually bought these spacers for is the top of the shock mount because in the kit there's a plastic the plastic shock mount brings that out so we need that and then we need one of the pivot balls which they come in the kit and they're slightly longer in the kit also there's some little washers to go on the outside part of that which are in here and I can't get them out because my fingers are too fat so when I bought the G-Speed kit there were well I bought also four of these spacers um, and I wasn't really sure where I was going to put them I've had one I've got one in the front I've got two in the back here uh, I, I knew that I wanted to put them in the shock towers but <clears throat> haven't got enough to do both shock towers because I only got four but I think the front is likely to take more abuse than the rear so I'm going to put an extra brace in the front and that's what I'm going to screw uh, the shock mount into but at this point I just need to find a suitably sized screw I think it's going to be this one No, that one's going to be too short as well. Okay, I think we're there this time with 25 mil. If these don't fit, I'm a bit stuck. There we go. That's going to be it. That's going to be our front mounted up. We've got decent clearance. Obviously, we've got a bit more on one side than the other because of the pan hard mount being so low. But I can't see a way around that, otherwise, it's going to foul on that servo arm. Let me know in the comments if there's a way around that. But it means I've definitely got more flex on one side than the other. Actually, that pan hard is hitting the pumpkin more than anything. We'll see how we get on. Right, so mounting our rear axle is going to be very similar. Uh, we've got four links to put in this time. So the longer links of the two are the bottom mounts the lower they're the lower links sorry not bottom mounts So I mentioned this in a previous video um, about the, the skid plates leaving these gaps on the sliders where, it's, where the body's pinched. I thought about it a little bit and I can see why they were printed in that orientation and that is to get the layer lines going that way. Otherwise there's you know, a slightly rough surface, much smoother in that direction than that direction. So I can see the logic in doing that. Still bugs me a little bit, but I can see why it was done that way. <clears throat> Assuming that is why it was done that way. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to put my upper links into the axle 
before I start this time. Okay, and then we can decide what's going to be our best position for our top links by kind of eyeballing where our axle looks like it's upright. And finding which the best link location is. There's kind of two options there, I think. So now that that's not flapping about, what you can see that axle is kind of clocked over a little bit forward. Um, but if we use the next holes, that that whole axle is kind of that whole axle will sort of be rotated backwards. So I think we'll go with those. But we might need to do that depending on the drive shaft. Actually, we might need to clock that axle backwards. For the drive shaft or lengthen the links because that drive shaft is going to be a right awkward angle there don't like the look of that yeah on the front the drive shaft is nicely in line with the the links so i'm going to i'm going to clock that back onto the other the other point see what difference that makes Okay, so that, that drive shaft angle is going to be better now. Um, I'm not sure I'm overly happy with that. I may change the length of the links. We'll see. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Mount the shocks. See what we think. And then we have our rear axle all mounted up. Nice bit of travel on there. Nice and smooth. It's got a little bit of sink to it already. That's going to be lovely. Now, one thing I did notice when I put the servo on, I didn't put the spacer in. There is a little spacer that comes with the servo, and I think I'm going to pop that in now. That's not going to make any difference in terms of that clearance, uh, but it is just going to make sure that the steering arm is not at a really acute angle. So that's going to move nice and smoothly now. There we go. Pretty pleased with that. A few tweaks and changes along the way, but I think we're there. So next job, we're just going to quickly mount up the gearbox, pop the drive shafts in. That shouldn't be a long job at all. And then we are done for today. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about here is whether these screws are long enough to go through that Delrin, because they don't look long enough to me. Not even close. So the longer ones are about right. And the question is, have I got any more in the kit? Because I, what I don't have is many of these countersink, countersunk screws. Okay, so the answer there is no. Uh, so you do need some separate different screws to mount your gearbox to the skid. I haven't got enough. I've got a couple. I might just do for now. And then I'll get some more ordered. What I'll do for now, it's got it mounted on there. I can mount the drive shafts, finish up here, and then I can 
get onto eBay or Amazon and order some more. Mildly frustrating though. Okay, so drive shafts, we have two different lengths. Sorry, just knocked the camera. Two different lengths. Longer one goes on the rear, shorter one on the front. And this sort of open um, pin retainer goes to the gearbox and this kind of closed capped off pin retainer goes to the axle. Make sure you get your phasing right. It's all in the in the manual. Uh, but they're saying pin one side, hex the other, not half and half like that. Otherwise, they will not phase right, and they'll be very noisy and probably break. So this was all new to me. I mean, never built one before, so I'm just trying to share that information as we go along. And again, this might be plastic, but the piece that it's going into underneath is metal, so I am going to put a touch of thread lock on there in a moment. Okay, that went together nice and easily on the front. The rear might be a little bit more awkward. And that, as they say for today, is that. So a couple of um, a little annoyances there, some of which were brought about by my own stupidity. Um, some are perhaps the risks, I suppose, of using uh, kits and what have you, the different different elements. Although this, you know, this chassis is designed for the element kit, so I would have thought the standard links would be right. So. Having those axles perhaps clocked around a little bit maybe is correct. Um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how that went together. So just kind of bear in mind the few things uh, extra that you need as part of when you're doing this over and above what comes in the kit. So you're definitely going to need some various different size bolts, uh, screws. Um, so I would, I would suggest getting a set of some sort. I'll link to the set that I've got in the description. Um, definitely going to need some different uh, countersinks, countersunk screws to mount the gearbox because the ones that come with it, clearly the, the element skid plate must be a lot thinner um, than this big thick Delrin one because uh, these 8mm screws don't stand a chance of going through those. Um, and don't forget the little aluminium spacers that you need in a couple of places actually, certainly at the tops of the shocks. Um, I needed a couple for the pan hard mount, uh, and that is now quite low. Um, I'm, you know, I may be able to get away with uh, a slightly smaller one in there. What I could perhaps do is swap over the steering one um, and the and one of these, and I might just get a little bit closer to the servo at that point. Um, but it might just give me that little bit of extra shock trouble without the the um, the pan hard link fouling on the top of the axle there. So if you're watching and you've already built one of these, uh, let me know what you did in the comments. That would be really helpful uh, just to, to get around that pan hard problem. Uh, I may ask the question on the, uh, the G-Speed group as well, see if other people have done the same. I think I've seen some information about that already and I'm, I'm pretty sure most people are doing the same sort of thing. So that's going to do it for this week. Um, I'm going to... Have a, leave it like that for a couple of days and then I think we will get on to doing the electrics. Um, so the all the electrics have arrived. So I've got a Holmes Hobby 540 motor, Crawlmaster Sport, um, just a, a, a budget, cheap and cheerful brush motor to go in there. And that is a 540. Uh, I've got a 1080 ESC that will probably go here 
receiver will probably go here and then I'm going to put my battery on that side and hopefully that should balance the weight pretty well side to side. Um, and then, you know, as we as we progress, we'll get it on the scales. I don't have the nice uh, four point scales, but we'll try and get work out the um, the weight distribution. But so far, it feels really good. Suspension feels nice and soft and compliant. Um, yeah, looking forward to finishing it off, getting it built and getting it out on the rocks. So if you stayed with us this long, thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, Please don't forget to like and subscribe if that is the case. And if you have enjoyed the video and you want to see more of these, this series, um, the next one will be out probably sometime in the week or maybe next weekend. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.